So in economics right now, in macroeconomic theory, there's something called modern monetary theory that you should pay attention to. It is, you know, one of those theories that when I first heard it, I thought that, you know, they, they were pull, pulling my chain. I heard about it first in 2010 from Eve Smith over at Naked Capitalism. Eve Smith, I've always thought that she's a sensible woman, just a smart woman, but she buys into this bullshit. In fact, a lot of people buy into it. And the idea, the basic idea of modern monetary theory is that, see, a government can spend as much money as it wants. It has no upper ceiling to its spending. Because, see, if it has the reserve currency, then, you know, it, it, it's basically unchained from the normal limitations of overspending, of government overspending. And they point to the fact that the United States over the last, uh, you know, 30, 40 years or whatever, back in 2010, it was what, uh, 30 years, that over the last 30 years then and 40 years now, the American government has gone into such incredible debt. I mean, it has gone into so much debt that, see, this theory evolved. It evolved in academia. And, you know, all everybody in academia started thinking, oh, this is the new thing. You know, MMT, Modern Monetary Theory, is an offshoot of Keynesian economics. And the whole point of Keynesian economics is that, see, you spend money to stimulate the economy. The government spends money to stimulate the economy. And, of course, it goes to these weird, uh, you know, paradoxes whereby, you know, uh, smashing windows is actually good for the economy. Because when you smash a window, then somebody has to come in and clean it up. And then somebody has to come in with uh, new window panes. And, of course, since they need new window panes, the, the window pane factory gears up to produce them. So, so destroying all the windows in a building is actually a good thing. You know, it, it, it gives these weird, you know, counterintuitive conclusions, Keynesianism does, that you're like, oh, buddy, I'm not so sure, right? But everybody buys it. Everybody in economic, uh, um, in the ivory tower of economics, and more to the point, you see, the people in economic academia, they are the ones who wind up running the central banks. They're the ones who wind up being the chief economists for the big banks. They're the ones. <laughs> They're the ones who wind up crashing the economy, man, like they've done before. Hmm? But see, nobody seems to point this out because they're captured by our good old friend, epistemic viciousness. You see, uh, the whole theory of modern monetary theory, the whole idea behind it, is that, see, the government, the country that has the reserve currency can print up as much as it wants, right? That, that, that's the basic idea. And that there's no upper limit to how much money it can print. Inflation will never happen. This is what they actually thought, by the way. They truly did. MMT theorists said outright that inflation was impossible if you had the reserve currency. Mm -hmm. And see, what was going on, the, 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 um, the error of their ways was very obvious. You see, these people who were pushing MMT, they didn't realize because they didn't look up. They were so looking at their theory that they didn't look up and look around. They didn't realize that the reason that the um, dollar was the reserve currency was that everybody else needed it because of oil. And that, you see, the 1974 deal whereby the United States guaranteed the House of Saud's uh, uh, security in exchange for the House of Saud, Saudi Arabia, selling all of its oil in dollars and putting all of its exit, um, ex excess dollar reserves into treasury bonds. Economically, it meant that Saudi Arabia became part of the United States. Economically, it meant that the OPEC nations that were all doing the same at the behest of Saudi Arabia or through subtle manipulations, economically, they were all part of America because they were taking their, their exports, oil, and turning them into dollars. They were receiving dollars and turning them into treasuries, into dollar-denominated assets. And so if an economist had sort of like stopped and said, hey, wait, 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 the American economy is not just the continental United States and, and Alaska and Hawaii. No, no, no. The real American economy has to include the OPEC nations. Then you understand how America could have gone into so much debt. Then you understand 
what was maintaining the dollar's value. But of course, that would go against the theories of the economists, because you know what? The first thing they'd say, they'd say, oh, no, that has nothing to do with economics. What you're talking about is, is politics, geopolitics. But this is, we're talking about economics. This is economics here and geopolitics over there, and we don't like it, and so we're not going to talk about it, and we're just going to ignore it. And we're going to come up with our fa fancy highfalutin theories of modern monetary theory bullshit. Mm. You see? Once again, you know, this epistemic viciousness, this circle of people in academia, divorced from reality, divorced from how reality is having an enormous impact on precisely the thing that they are studying. They ignored the whole issue of the petrodollar. They ignored the whole issue that the countries around the world were obliged to buy dollars, and that is what kept the dollar strong. Instead, they looked at the effects on the American economy, and they looked at the fact that the United States would go into all of this debt and nothing would happen to it, and they say, oh, you know, if you have the reserve currency, it's like a magic wand. You can do whatever you want. And they looked at the very issue of having a reserve currency as some magical quality divorced from reality. Mm -hmm. You read the modern monetary uh, theory literature, and it is fucking hilarious, man. Because they treat the reserve currency status of the dollar as if it's like uh, being left-handed or having blue eyes. They don't realize that it is the effect of something and that they should be studying what is causing this particular effect of the dollar's reserve currency status. They don't look at that at all. They just posit it as like some sort of magic. And they run from there. And from there, they came up with all kinds of, I mean, look, dude, I've read some of these papers, man, all kinds of like math equations and all kinds of heavy duty shit way above my head, man. Like zoom, you know what I'm talking about? Like all kinds of stuff. I mean, like, well, economics back in the 70s, they wholesale imported physics to give uh, economics the patina of uh, intellectual respectability. But the fact of the matter is, all this physics that they imported, all these equations and all this crap, it's just so much bullshit, you know? I mean, it, it's no different from uh, some, uh, you know, some bum off the street who gets into a suit, uh, you know, made at Savile Row and pretends that he's a gentleman. You're like, dude, you're not. You're just some bum off the street, you know, dressing up like a lord from some manor. But you're not a lord from no manor. You're just a bum off the street in a nice suit. That's exactly what economics did when, so, when they imported physics and all of these, the, the math of physics. But be that as it may, you look at the MMT literature. And a lot of it, like, I'm telling you, man, it's got all kinds of this physics shit. <laughs> I find it funny because they are trying so desperately to give intellectual respectability to what they're doing. And what they're basically doing is living in a fantasy land. And why am I picking on MMT? Well, because that is the dominant theory of the Biden administration. And a lot of guys who are formerly Keynesians, you know, even people like, um, you know, Paul Krugman, you call him MMT and he's going to like, you know, fight you on it, right? But in terms of like what he's actually pushing, he is an MMT. They posit a reality that doesn't match reality. Their theories are based on their imagination. They don't understand why they are in the position that they are. And so why is this important? Because the United States government has been pursuing policies over the last 36 months at least, you could argue since way back in 2008, that are going to lead to the complete collapse of the American dollar and the complete annihilation of the American economy. Simple as. That is what they have been doing. And they have, you know, painted up this uh, sow's ear in, in this intellectually highfalutin makeup of MMT. I'm mixing my metaphors horribly, but you, you get the point of the gist of what I'm saying. They, they use all kinds of formulas and math and all kinds of bullshit to dress up the fact that they basically took the American national credit card and have been zipping it up and down through the machine until it's busted out. And this is an example of epistemic viciousness in economics. And, and this, is, this is catastrophic, not just for the United States, it's going to be a catastrophe for the whole fucking world. World economy 
in the West at least, is going to suffer catastrophically because of this. And so you, you see what happens here. You see when you have people who are, they are the elite, they are the leadership of a particular, very crucial segment of our civilization. But they have no vision beyond their very limited purview. And they don't dare look up and look around. And in point of fact, there has been so much pressure on uh, economists who have heterodox opinions that, you know, they've left. A lot of these guys wound up going into the private sector and made a shit ton of fucking money with their heterodox opinions. I mean, like, why am I going to waste my fucking time trying to convince retards of what I think insofar as economics when I could just apply what I think to the real world and make myself a whole boatload of fucking money? You see my point? Epistemic viciousness in economics is going to lead to the complete collapse of the Western economies. Know what's going on.